for anybody that doesn't know who you are, and that is a real crime, can you tell us who you are and what you do? My name's Andrew Weatherall, or Andy. I uh, prefer Andy, don't like Andrew. I'm normally behind these things, the cameras, that thing in front, so you don't normally see me a great deal of the time. Some people, I said I would do this plug, some people might know me as the son of a bitch from Hardcore Wrestling Radio, which I do in my pastime away from this. I'll probably get on that a bit later. So, what is your main role for the team and for the actual, not just the cameras, but overall? I like to think I'm in charge when Sarah lets me wear the trousers. Seriously. I like to think it's um, it's all my um, group, but I know it's it's obviously that's not be not not being selfish. I like to look at it as it's my baby, and Sarah helps us to nurture that baby. But I, I tend to take too much responsibility for things that don't need responsibility for. So. So you'd say that you might overthink things and overanalyze. I overcomplicate everything. Everything is um, two and two isn't four. Two and two is two numbers and it equals four. But there's two numbers, two and two, if that makes any sense to some people. Do you think that's just based on your drive to perfect the team or to get the answers that you need? One of them, I look at it as a downfall. Other people probably don't look at it as a downfall. My biggest downfall is I pull apart everything I do, um, whether it's to do with paranormal or personal things, everything in life that I do, I look back and pick apart what I've actually done. I'm never satisfied with what I've done. I always think the next piece of footage that I'll film will be better than the previous bit of footage. The next piece of equipment will be better than the previous piece of equipment. So I'm never happy in anything I do ever. So you mentioned that you do wrestling interviews um, and radio shows aside from the team what is the or who should I say is the most idealistic person that you've managed to interview to date um, it's got to be unless you're an ardent wrestling fan this guy won't mean nothing to you. You're probably expecting me to say Hulk Hogan and, and so on and Ric Flair and the usual people that everybody knows. It's not going to be none of them. It's a guy who I've grown to watch when I was younger, yes, he is that old and still works. And it's a guy called uh, Brian Knighton and he goes under the name of Axel Rotten. I spoke to him now personally on Facebook. I got to know him on Facebook, interviewed him God knows how many times now. And unfortunately, the guy's fallen on bad times and he's now basically paralysed from the neck down and in a wheelchair, which has just happened recently. So if he is watching this, get well soon, Brian. I know you will. And obviously much love from the team as well. Um, what would you describe in five words, and only five words, how would you describe yourself? I like to look at, think that I'm honest, outspoken, like my own way most of the time. Um, I, I don't know of two other words. I can think of plenty of derogatory words, but um, one thing I, I really run my life by is. Sometimes I'm, I look at myself as I like to think I'm everybody's friend in the team and I can, I'll always listen to anyone's point of view but they have to be prepared to get my point of view back. It's not normally what they expect to hear but I will listen to what someone's got to say and then always have to put as my late father always put me two penneths worth in and have my say. It doesn't necessarily come over well. I find it difficult to make new friends not because of anything to do with me because of the way I am I, I'm, I'm frank I speak 
what comes out of my mouth. What comes out of my mouth is what you get. There's no candy coating. If I think you're a dick, you're a dick, and that's it. It's it's that simple. I'm not going to put up with someone just for the sake of putting up with them. That isn't me. And I've lost a lot of friends through that. And at the end of the day, friends come and go. But the friends that I've got in the team, I hope, are close friends. We might have quabbles, squabbles, but I think they can come to me like I can go to them if there's ever an issue. So we've heard off other team members um, messages and thoughts uh, and warnings to do with possibly starting up their own team. Um, what positive point would you put on anybody that was thinking of becoming an investigator? I would recommend anyone who's watching this now if you're thinking of being a part of a team, by all means go and find the team that's right for you, settle in the team and take it from there. I would not recommend anyone start off their own paranormal team. The other team members have mentioned it in the past, the backstabbing, the bitching, um, it does take over your life. Um, I've, I was a person who had eight or nine hobbies until Stoke Haunted came along. This is basically my life. Unfortunately, as sad as it seems, this is everything. Everything that takes a second seating to you guys. So to say that you're passionate about the team would be a bit of an understatement. Yeah. Uh, me and Sarah have had many, many an argument. Um, sometimes she thinks the team means more to me than she does, which she knows is wrong and it's not true. But every hour that I wake up, this thing here in front of me rules my life. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I really don't know. I think I dedicate far too much time and that's all because you try to run the best team you can. If you're a member of a team, you go on an investigation on Saturday and you wait until the next investigation. You haven't got to worry about editing, sound recording, is, are all the batteries charged for all the equipment? Are people turning up on an investigation? Is the problems with the venue that you're going to? They don't need to know any of that rubbish if they don't run a team. So the Andy that we see in front of the camera now is a Stoke Haunted Andy. What is your life like beyond Stoke Haunted? Um, any quirky things that we could get to know about you? Um, when I can take a chill, I'm probably one of the funniest people on the planet. Or I like to think in my own head I'm one of the funniest people on the planet. Um, I'm a big wrestling fanatic. That's why I joined a wrestling radio show in the States. And I'm a walking A to Z when it comes to wrestling. You can throw any wrestling question at me and if I don't know, I could get you the answer probably within 24 hours. Because, like a Sado said, I bought me in, like an encyclopedia of wrestling, an A to Z. Um, I enjoy driving, not as much as I used to do because there's too many idiots on the road and uh, fortunately or unfortunate for me now with due to a back injury I can't do car maintenance which was one of my big hobbies. I used to love pulling cars apart and rebuilding them hence that's why I've got an old XR2 shagger as some of you might call it in my back garden, my pride and joy. But I just can't do that now. What I used to do, I'd just sit in it and play now, that's it. So aside from what you've previously mentioned to us now, am I right in thinking you're a bit of a family man as well? Um, yeah, my family means probably more to me than anything. My, my biggest problem is, and Sarah's sitting behind the camera, she can verify this, I'm not a person who, to show feelings very well. Now, whether that comes down from my upbringing, I was never knocked about or abused, don't take it the wrong way, but you get some families where you give your mum or your dad a birthday card and you get hugs and kisses. I've never been a huggy and kissy person, ever. I feel when the team get together, it, I, I said this conversation to Sarah, everyone will they'll shake hands and hug each other and people, I don't know if people have got to notice that they don't come up to me and give me a hug and sometimes I think aren't I worth a hug and then I think maybe it's the thing that you're giving off that you don't really like the closeness but I'm beginning to change slow but short 
So what you really need is a hug. Yeah, a hug and a slap. <laughs> All at the same time. Yeah. Okay, and just to finalise things, um, where, what are your aspirations for the team within the next 12 months? Um, the same as when I first started, just to bring the truth. Um, don't want to bring any um, anything that's really pathetic. You see, I'm, I'm not saying other teams are pathetic, but other teams tend to produce paranormal evidence that they think is evidence. And if they really thought about it, looked at it from a wider perspective, they'd realise it's probably nothing more than something that can be explained with this team, this group of people, and it's not just me. If we say that we've found something that we can't explain, we come to you guys to say, can you explain what you think it is? Because trust me, if we open it out to you guys and say, what do you think? If it stumps us, it's going to stump basically anybody. Um, we throw it everything that we do. And we don't do it for um, notoriety. We don't want to be famous doing this, although it would be nice. We just do it for the sake of us, and I don't do Stoke Haunted for your benefit, I do it for mine and my team's benefit. We get out of it what we get out of it. You might enjoy watching some episodes, you might not enjoy watching others, but that's entirely up to you. Everything I stick on that camera when I do the editing at the end of the day is the best I can achieve, and if that's not good enough, go and look at another team. No skin off my nose. If you would like to add, rate or subscribe anything that we've done on our Facebook or YouTube page, please check out the links below and any comments that you want to make, we're more than happy to accept them. We, we might bite your head off with a reply if it's nasty, but if you're nice to us, we'll be nice to you. I might give this impression that I'm not a nice person to know, but I am. Seriously, I am a nice person to know. Um, the light's just gone out, so I think that could be the um, the end of the evening. So thanks for watching, and uh, you can always catch me at www.stokehaunted.com. You can find me at Facebook forward slash Stoke Haunted, or you can find me at Facebook forward slash Hardcore Wrestling Radio, where you can speak to the son of a bitch there. <laughs> <laughs>